go. I'm just going to power push through it. So uh, yeah. tap three to counter episode five. This is deck building part two. We're mostly talking about ramp today. Um, the cards we've went over silently, apparently, because I'm stupid. Um, <laughs> at least we caught it before the end this time. Yeah. Um, is Soul Ring, which uh, one colorless taps for two every colorless. Deck. Every deck. Gotta put it in every deck. Yes, sir. Uh, Arcane Signet taps. It's uh, two colorless. Taps for any color in your commander's color identity. So in non-mono decks, this is a really good ramp card. Um, yep. You have Dark Ritual, which is one black pip that you will tap for three black mana to your mana pool. It is a one-off. Um, we have Talismans that we were talking about, which are two colorless. Uh, tap one colorless or tap for two colors, depending on which one you choose, and it'll deal one damage. Um, and then mine Fantastic. Stuff. Oh my god, yeah. Fantastic stuff for uh, you know, all those decks that you're struggling to ramp in and keep up with green um because green's got so much so much um wild growth topa sprawl carpet flowers uh nature's lore three visits i mean with all that right there they're you know probably four turns ahead easy um it's just it's just you gotta be able to keep up with those decks that are running green um yeah. mono green sleeves <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, one that I wanted to throw out because uh, it's it's one of our favorites, just cause will. <laughs> it is definitely one of my favorites. I um, I uh, definitely love me some Jessica's will because not only is it impulse draw, it can also be used for mana for a red based on how many cards are in a target opponent's hand. So uh, for my draw doom deck, let's say you pop Jessica's will whenever I've drawn half my deck. You're about to tap, or you're about to put 50 mana in your pool. Like, <laughs> depending on the deck you're running that in, that's game. Like, you just you just killed yourself. Yeah, honestly, uh, Jessica's will is so good. Um, you can use it to pump spells or come up with mana, you know, that you didn't have on the field. It's it's just so good for any red decks. Yeah. Um, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, I agree. I um, I'm as you've seen today, I'm getting more and more into the impulse drawing. The yeah, uh, your Rakdos deck is moving, schmoving, schmoving. Um, although I did remove one of the cards I'm about to say, just because I don't like to tap one to color correct. I like to have the colors correctly, but uh, yeah. the the signets do offer, especially in really high color decks that have a lot of like five color, four color. Racto Signet, uh, you tap two colorless. Um, hey, Dylan, welcome to the chat, buddy. Um, we're talking about ramp. Um, so Racto Signet, you tap two colorless, and then the effect is you can tap one colorless and tap it to add black and red, um, which is good if you're in a five-color deck because say you have four green and you need black and red, you tap one green, you make two black and red, you know, one black, one red. Um, right. So in high color decks, I would say yes. It's the the opposite of what I would do with Arcane Signet. <laughs> right. I it, it does have its place, and uh, honestly, like if you have a lot of rocks that are tapping for, or a lot of rocks, or a lot of uh, basic mana, um, and what I mean, what I mean, basic mana, um, I don't mean basic lands. I mean like lands that are tapping for uh, colorless mana. You can use the signet to color correct and get more color out of your colorless mana. So it's not bad, but it definitely has a, a specific place. I just, in, in our, because the majority of yours in my decks are three and two color. Mm -hmm. um, in those three and two color decks, I'm not using a signet. I'm sorry, I'm just not doing it. <laughs> like, uh, people no, might disagree I, I, with me and that's fine. Um, personally, yeah. I'm not doing it. I've thought about it and I, I've just had a hard time with it. Um, uh, but uh, one of one of my another one of my favorites uh, is actually a planeswalker, Xenagos the Reaver. Oh, I love it. <laughs> his his plus one uh, add X mana in any combination of red or and or green, where X is the number of creatures you control. So if you're running anything that's heavy creature or uh, uh, creature token creation, um, 
this is this piles on so well with uh what is that avenging zendikar um oh, yeah. Hylath, omnath uh, you, yeah you pop that out and you get a ton of tokens immediately and then you're like oh here's Zenigos. i'm gonna just plus one him and then get a ton of mana for your to just keep going either in that main phase or in main phase two it's uh, it's really interesting to just watch that thing just explode full of mana well the the extra benefit is if you're running a god deck like i used to run if you put crew fix into that build all that mana gets captured as colorless and doesn't expire that's interesting and so you can basically just super token <laughs> mana <laughs> more mana more mana which is ugh. i mean colorless isn't always the greatest but i mean you can even make yeah. uh, you i mean if you have 50 colorless i promise you you're going to be doing a lot hopefully hopefully you don't have so many pips that it uh that with 50 mana you can't do something yeah um 50 is a, a you know just a thrown out there number obviously <laughs> if you I mean, if you have if you have fifty uh fifty creatures out on the field, I hope you're already winning. <laughs> yeah, I hope that game is over. Just swing. What the f <laughs> <laughs> no, I want the mana. I want Float all, it. Of, all of the mana. All of the mana. All right. So, uh, your favorite card, Smothering Tithe. So this is a little <laughs> more of a competitive card, um, and it is white. So for one white pip, three colorless. Whenever an opponent draws a card, that player may pay two colorless. If that player doesn't, you create a treasure token. Treasure tokens can be sacrificed for any color of mana, so to be added to your mana pool. So let's say you need a red, you you tap and crack the treasure token, and you get a red for one turn. It, it at, you know once you use it, it's kicked. Um, which is it's I uh, can't tell you how many games we've been going by. Do you pay the two? Do you pay the two? <laughs> you pay. You pay. Uh, Sorry, I, I, I'm here to collect my taxes. <laughs> Basically, I mean, the picture is a guy's head getting bashed out and I, money falling out of it. <laughs> oh man, but man, I, I don't, I tell you, every time that card comes out, though, people are just like, oh, again, yeah, it's like it's like Ristic Study or, yep. um, you know, <laughs> any of those other sweaty <laughs> consecrated sphinx or, bleh. no, not even, no, um. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ristic Remora is kind of a tax on you. Mystic Remora? Uh, or, yeah, Mystic Remora. Jeez. <laughs> Ristic Remora. Ristic, Ristic, Ristic Study and Mystic Remora, I just want to smash into one. <laughs> That'd be a game. gross card. Ristic, <laughs> Ristic Study with a cumulative upkeep and a draw. A free uh, draw. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, on that white, though, um, one... Uh, one white ramp that I absolutely love um, because it fetches you. We have a question in the chat. Oh, yeah. Uh, go ahead. So, Dylan wanted to know uh, do most commander decks run some kind of ramp? And uh, I think we can safely say that all commander decks run ramp. If you're not running ramp, um, basically you just fall behind. You end up playing a lot slower because you can only play one mana per turn. Um, Basically, the, the your all your opponents and the rest of the pod are all gonna be able to play much faster and play the cards and creatures and enchantments, everything out of their hand, a lot faster than you playing one mana per turn. So and you might yeah. miss. Yeah, and like you could possibly miss, man. If you miss a, a if you miss a drop. land drop and you're not running ramp, oof. I don't think that I've ever be... seen a functional commander deck not run ramp. Like none at all, like nothing. Yeah, I, I yeah, I'm definitely. I don't think I've ever seen it, but I mean, it probably exists in some scuffed build, but I don't feel like looking it up because I don't have. I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm curious if you could find ramp in Popper. Well, yeah, because it's any any cards that are common. So common, arcane right? signet counts. Mindstone counts. Uh, sky shroud claim, depending on which version, counts. See, so you, you can't do a soul ring. No, no, no. Soul Ring's out. Yeah. It's a common. Or an uncommon. Yeah. Uh, uncommon, yeah. Well, uh, I've never seen Commander Popper either. I always see it in 60-card oh, hey, format. Oh, so. Man, if I if I ever build a Popper, I'm going to definitely go green, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You will not be struggling. 
I would he, not. He's like, I far seek into uh he's, he's no <laughs> explore. <laughs> uh, so the white one that I wanted to bring up uh is uh Weathered Wayfarer. Um he's a one one for one white pip. Um you pay one and tap him, search your land for a or search your library for a land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. Activate only if an opponent controls more lands than you. Um, it's a great way if you're running white, you can always keep up with, let's just say somebody's running green and they're, you know, ramping one turn after another, you can keep up with that. And with landfall decks, they're going to be running a lot, a lot of ramp to keep that land flowing. Um, and something really cool about that is it's not, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to pick a basic land. You can pick any land. No, man, don't apologize. There's such a thing as a noob question. That's what this whole thing is about, is people learning how to... Or not even learning, because, you know, we don't have all the right answers. Like, oh, there's no, no, no. Uh, there's people <laughs> who disagree with our opinions, just like we disagree with theirs. So, um, there's never a uh, noob question, bro. Like, if if, uh, if you want to know, that ask, because that's why we do it. Um, but, yeah, no, you're. I actually seem to recall somebody ramping off of my number of mana yesterday. <laughs> So, you uh, definitely uh, have gotten some use out of uh, that particular card. Yeah, basically any white decks that I have, uh, I'm definitely going to put that in. It's not an Ishin, but it's probably going to go in. <laughs> right. Um, you, which one did you just do? You did Knight, or did you did... Uh, what was the name of it? I'm sorry, my brain just... Oh, blocked. sorry. Uh, Weathered Wayfarer. Okay, so uh, similarly in white, you have Knight of the White Orchid. So if an opponent oh, controls more right. lands than you when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a planes card, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle. Um, I like yours a little better because it can be used other than ETB or enter the battlefield, right. which gives it's you that an, versatility. It's a ramping engine, unlike a, a kind of like a draw engine. Right. Yeah. As long as you're, which you know, it's not a good thing to be behind on mana, but it keeps you competitive in the ramp category right um which is great uh so another uh, artifact one to pivot back to artifacts uh wayfarer's bobble okay so yep. i love to see this in my opening hand because it goes from one colorless onto the field and then you can crack it to search for a basic land for two colorless and tapping it and then sacrificing it then you shuffle um so on turn two you're pulling mana to the field which I like. Uh, in turn one, you used that one mana for something, which I also like. Um, so it keeps you doing something every turn. A um, lot better than uh, Traveler's Locket, because you're not going to be able to use that. Um, and it brings it to your hand, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Wayfarers is actually... Put it out to the battlefield tap. Well, Wayfarers so... is. I'm saying Travelers. Oh, yeah. oh Travelers, yeah. Yeah, Travelers I mean, is to your hand, which is where it's garbage. Uh, yeah, chat also said land tax. Ooh, yeah, land tax. That's right. I forget about that one because um, yeah, it's expansive. <laughs> it's expansive. Well, now that we're proxying um, stuff, it doesn't really matter. But um, yeah. that was from Trey. That's from Trey, by the way. At the uh, beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search. Your library for up to three basic land cards. Reveal them, put them into your hand, and shuffle your library. That's a one white pip enchantment. That's beautiful. That's gorgeous. I love um, it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you're going to fetch three basic lands. Put them in your hand, and that keeps you your hand full. And I mean full of land to constantly play. I mean, if you get that... Turn one. That's a man, game changer, yeah. Dude, you're set. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, because green, green, I know green will stay ahead. Um, but basically, as long as, let's just say, you know, you play your land for turn. Let's just say you go, you went first and you played this. Um, all you, All it needs is one person to ramp. To have two lands before it comes back to your upkeep, and then you're fetching. So honestly, that's that's an amazing card too. 
Right. I don't know. If I... I don't know if I'd pay forty bucks for it though. <laughs> I would hundred percent pay forty bucks for it. But that's just me. The uh, in Mardu, your 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 ramping. It seems like the most stable color of the three for ramp, for like long term. Like obviously you can Jessica's will for fire for for mountain for one yeah. turn, but the white is really where they're getting that that catch up mechanic for getting back to even with everybody else on the battlefield for mana. You know, land tax, uh, the creek, uh, what is it, weathered, weather, uh, yeah, weathered wayfarer. Oh, um, yeah, um, night of the white orchid, loyal, loyal warhound, uh, that mixed together with smothering tithe, the rocks, smothering like, tithe. yeah, yeah you're, I mean, you, you, you're gonna come across mo much more ramp catch up in white than you would in black or black or red, so right. Um, cartographer's hawk was from chat too. Uh, I think I remember looking at. Uh, I've seen it before, but I don't use it. Let me look. Hawk. Yeah, there was something I didn't like about it. Uh, it has to deal combat damage to a player that controls more land than you. So not only do they have to have more land, that you also have to deal damage with a two one. Uh, so I don't actually like cartographer's hawk, uh, hawk just because if they have a flyer. Or they don't have more lands than you, reach. you're getting nothing. Yeah, or reach, you're yeah. getting nothing. Um, so I definitely want to stick into the the weathered and into the the other categories. I mean, there's there's other yeah yeah, honestly, because it says deals combat damage. Yeah, you you'd have to to get to that to get that to go through. You'd either have to run enough removal to get rid of their blockers, or make it unblockable. Um, so you're going to be running some sort of uh, enchantment or um, equipment artifact to get him through their front line. Um, so it's extra. I mean, it's not a bad card. It does everything that we're looking at for white ramp. Um, but you're just going to need a little extra push to get him through. Well, I, I left the map off on purpose. Uh, I was We were just going for, like, the most... the. We we'll go for the most budget and the most efficient that we can. But uh, I did see in chat Gaia's Cradle. That's a super expensive card, if I'm not mistaken. Um, let me look at the price tag. On this, actually. Yeah, that's like a fat one. God, that's so friggin' expensive. Wow. Uh, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen this. It's oh, nine hundred eighty nine dollars okay. for the real. <laughs> a, I have seen it, but uh, in a case at a convention. <laughs> the uh, basically it's a legendary land. And it uh, taps, and you add one forest to your mana pool for each creature you control, which is really cool. Uh, I would love to have one. I don't have one. Um, I might proxy one later, but um, proxy. we don't we don't usually go towards the non-budget options on here, with the exception of Smothering Tithe, just because um, people who are building decks, especially when they're coming to like stuff like this, are generally newer, and they're not ready to spend that kind of money, and by the time they are, they generally know what they want. Um. So that's why we lean more towards the staples. Yeah. Although here at the end we were gonna do, uh, which I think we can go ahead and hit now, um, two cards that are on the more expensive side, that uh, play in the more competitive format, um, which would be Mana Crypt, and Mox Amber. Um, so Mana Crypt, uh, it's zero cost, so you can play it whenever. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, flip a coin. If you lose the flip, it deals three damage to you, and then it taps. Uh, either way, it taps for two colorless. Um, this is part of a lot of the turn one, two combos for winning. Like in all the CEDH decks, Mana Crypt is pretty much part of all of them because you need that extra mana for free in order to win that early. Um, so it's, it, many people consider that card extremely broken. Um, yeah, I have a list of the budget ramp cards. Actually, I can post it in chat right now so that you can, uh, it's not all budget, but most of it is. So there it is in chat on Scryfall. Um, but anyway, so uh, Mana Crypt is very competitive. We, he and I both have a little spine crawl whenever we see a Mana Crypt hit the field. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that, and I mean, uh, somebody throws out a Jeweled Lotus. Um, yeah, that's another $100. Yeah, it's a it's a one pop. I mean, it's a it's a zero cost artifact. Tap it, sacrifice jewel lotus, add three mana of any one color, and spend this mana only to cast your commander. But I mean, three mana of one color, 
if you have a mono color commander, um, even like off the top of my head, Najila, she's uh, two colorless, one red pip. Jeweled Lotus gets her out immediately. Turn one. Uh, if I if I ever see a Jeweled Lotus, I'm gonna be like, okay, is this a turn one or two, two <laughs> turn two win? <laughs> You're expecting a the opening hand mana crypt, and then <laughs> uh, Jeweled Lotus. Mana for turn. Soul ring. <laughs> Soul ring. <laughs> Mox amber. That's Mox the whole amber. hand. Oh my god. Oh, no. I just pull. If that happens to me, I just pull. I don't want to play anymore. I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, And then Mox amber is another zero cost. Legendary artifact. And it taps for uh, any one color among legendary or legendary creatures or planeswalkers you control. So... Um, I definitely, definitely need to pay attention to the part where it says among legendary creatures and planeswalkers you control. So if you don't control anything in that category, it's going to tap for nothing. So there's once again, there's a time and a place for everything. Although this is, for zero cost, it's an extremely good card. Um, it just has to be played properly. But uh, those are in the higher level CEDH category that like we don't play in. Um, I don't want to play a game for one turn, two turns, and then start a new game to play for one turn or two turns. Yeah. Just to watch people pop off. Um, no, Dylan. Uh, most of the artif- or most of the ramp is not artifacts. It's just we're going over the artifacts because in our first episode, episode one, green ramp, we went over a lot of ramp in green. So we're, we've touched here on some black and some white, as well as some red and artifact. To try to balance that out a little bit, just so that you guys can see other options. So if you want to go back and watch that video, uh, Green Ramp, it's actually on the YouTube and on the Facebook. Um, it will explain a bunch of ramp cards, like uh, Nature's Lore, which is on the list I sent you in this chat, Three Visits, and Sky Shroud Claim, a bunch of other good stuff. Yeah, there's lots of good stuff there. Um before we uh, wrap this up, and it, uh, I just wanted to touch on one blue. It's very specific, and you kn- you should know this one. Uh, Malcolm Keenide Navigator? Oh, my God. The pirate <laughs> commander. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, he's, he's blue ramp. Um, he's blue it's... infinite is what he is. <laughs> uh, he creates treasure tokens whenever uh, uh, one or more pirates you control deal damage to your opponents. Um, honestly, he's a machine. He's a machine. Um, I he's he's one of the only blue ramp cards that I've ever seen. I really don't. I can't think of a blue ramp card off the top of my head. I can't either. Now that I'm thinking about it, <laughs> so I, I'm honestly leaning towards blue as being the hardest to ramp, hardest color to ramp in. All right, so let's see what we got. Uh, oh my god, Dreamscape like, I, artist. What's that? It's one blue, one colorless. Pay two colorless and a blue. Discard a card, sacrifice a land, and search your library for two basic lands and put them onto the <laughs> battlefield and shuffle. Oh, man. I hate it here. There's also oh, a Tefiri. Uh, Tefiri that lets you get some land. And then there's a Artificer that lets... Blue cre- untapped blue creatures tap for colorless blue. Wow, there's really not great ramp in blue. Uh, Oof. There's a bunch of artifact related stuff. So like Vel Val Ven ugh, Vettelkin Engineer. Yeah. yeah. Tap two, add two mana of any color to your mana pool. Spend this only to play okay. artifact or activate abilities. It's there. It's just, man, I don't want to ramp in okay. blue. <laughs> uh, man. Uh, target artifact creature becomes blue until end of turn. Uh, a... Tap an untapped blue creature you control. Add two mana. It seems like it's it's a lot of creature based um, uh, mana dorks. <laughs> Trey said blue is already OP. It's it doesn't need to ramp. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Um, I mean, I think that's 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 pretty yeah. much at the end because I mean, if you plug this together with the green ramp video, it's it's there's just so many options. It just depends on what colors sure. you're running, and, I mean, and 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 we're not gonna be you know we're not gonna be the you know knowledge gurus of every ramp card out there. I mean, we're still learning ourselves. Well, everyone should be every day because new sets are dropping every three months. Right. 
Um, Actually, there's been I feel like there's been one every month lately. Well, no, there was uh, the last one was um, Brothers War. Well, actually, no, jump kick start. jump start technically, and then no. Brothers War, and then Dominaria, which was like two and a half months apart. Um, but uh, so next week, the episode, what we'll be doing is we're gonna pick a commander. So if anybody has any commander ideas, feel free to DM us. Um, and we will look at that, and we're gonna go through, and we're gonna. From start to finish, we're going to assemble a deck. So we're going to go through the categories. because, uh, And then once the commander is selected, we'll go through unique. We'll put the unique part together for a first pass. It's not going to be an ironclad deck. It's just to show you how the formula works for the start of a deck. Um, and then, you know, we'll go from there. We'll, you know, it'll be a fun time. You got anything else, Josh? No. Um... Just wish there was more blue ramp. Yeah, it's sad. <laughs> what? <laughs> you hate blue. Get out of here. I do. Uh, strong counter decks. He's like, if it if it removes my thing or takes my thing away from me, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Stop removing my things from the field. There's a new magic format <laughs> called uh, No Removal. And, no uh, Removal. You just can't run oh, removal gosh. spells. Man. Oh, man. If that, if that was a thing... Can you imagine CEDH? Everybody just whoever whoever's turn it is first wins. Yeah, wins because <laughs> nobody can stop it. <laughs> oh, that sounds painful. I would be so bored. <laughs> well, I guess it's your turn to win. Yeah, it's like you just roll dice, then don't play. <laughs> uh, um, all right. Well, all right. I guess we'll uh, lock it up here, and we will see you guys next Wednesday at eight. 30 for the next one. Well, if I could end it. <laughs> <laughs> Difficulties everywhere. We hope.